Okay, here we are back with our um, argyle in the round, and I've finished knitting the diamonds, and now I'm ready to put in the contrasting um, diamond outlines. These. So in order to um, line these up, what I need to do is figure out where in the knitting these lines should be. And to do that first, I need to um, find my stitches. And so I want to point out what a stitch is and what a stitch is not. So this here, this here is a stitch. It looks like a V here. It looks like a V. This here is not a stitch. It looks like a letter A. See how the um, knitting comes together at the top. Where on a knit stitch, the knitting comes together at the bottom and it looks like a letter V. So I need to count over from my bottom point, the dark color here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to identify that stitch. So here's my bottommost stitch. And I need to count over eight stitches. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, this is my first stitch that I need to identify. And I'll just put a pin there. Okay, and on this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So again, my bottommost stitch is here. One, two, three, four. I have to be careful to stay in a straight line. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you're using a, a thin um, sock needle like what I'm using here, you can check yourself to make sure you've gone in a straight line by catching the leg of each stitch across just to make sure you haven't gone off one. Here I am with my... Just to make sure that you are in fact, in a straight line across, and that you haven't uh, um, gone up or down a row. Okay, so I've counted my stitches one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I will put a pin there. Okay, so I've got my two bottom stitches identified. Now, Going vertically, I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'll do the same here. I'll identify my stitch. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. I'll identify that pin by uh, that stitch by putting a pin on it. And so what I'm doing is I am marking the points, the outermost points and the center point of each diamond. So I'm marking this stitch and this stitch, this stitch, these two. this center one, these two, and this one. And I'm doing that so that when I start um, 
embroidering with duplicate stitch of these lines, I can move in a straight line all the way along here through the center to this point, then up to that point, then up to that point, down to that point, down through the center again to this point, and then back down again to the other point, the marked stitch. Okay, so I will go ahead and put my pins in place and I'll come back in just a second so we can start the duplicate stitch. Okay, so I've got all of my pins in place to identify the points where I'm going to end up with my contrasting color. And now I'm going to use tapestry needle to embroider in my stitches. And duplicate stitch is just, um, think of it as tracing the stitch, the stitches. So it's important to be able to recognize, as I stated earlier, what a stitch looks like and how the stitch uh, connects to its neighbors. So let me first um, come in from underneath. And you're going to come in at the base of the stitch. So here's a stitch here. What I mean at the base of a stitch is that I'm going to be coming in right here where the points come down. So this is if this is the stitch that I'm going to embroider, I'm actually coming up at the point that I'm actually coming up through the center of the stitch below. So here's my marked stitch right here. I'm going to come up the center of the stitch below. And I'm going to be pulling my yarn and leaving um, six to eight inch tail as usual. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and remove this pin. So if I'm already in the stitch I want to be in. Okay, so I'm going to think of it as tracing a line. So I'm following this stitch that's here. So I'm going to go uh, following along. And then I'm going to go behind where it goes behind. And it goes behind this leg and this leg. So I'm going to follow along and then I'll pull the yarn. Now the um, thing you want to do is you want to pull your yarn um, so that you match the tension of the stitches around it. Now I'm going to go ahead and go right back down where I came in and I'm going to go ahead and go back down to the um, back side of the fabric. Being careful not to Tie a knot. Okay, now according to the chart here, there's my first stitch there. According to the chart here, we just embroidered this stitch. Now the next stitch is over one and up one. And then the one after that, over one and up over one and up, over one and up, and so forth until I reach this point here. So, let me do that. So here's the stitch I just em embroidered. Let me pull on it to make sure it's the same size as its neighbors. And then here's its uh, neighbor here. So over one and up one. So I'm going to come in and the stitch right next to the one that I embroidered. Pull the yarn. And then I'm going to go embroider the stitch above. So it's this one here, over one and up one. So I'm going to go behind the two legs. I'm following, I'm following this guy here. And then I'm going to go right back down to the back side. And I will adjust my stitch so that it looks about the same size 
as its neighbors. That's two. And I'm going to go over one and up one. So we're on this row. I'm going to come up in the stitch right next door. And I'm going to embroider the stitch above. So I'm going to continue this way until I get to, um, actually I'm going to continue this way until I get all the way through here, through the center stitch to this stitch. And then when I get to here, I'll come back. Um, so I can show you going in the opposite direction. So I'll see you back here in just a few minutes. Okay, so here I am. I've worked my way from here all the way across up to this pin. And so now I need to reverse direction and travel from here to here. So it's very much the same thing as what I have been doing, except instead of coming in and um, following the stitch from right to left, I'm going to come in again. I'm, I'm here, right on my chart. So I'm going to go over to the right and then um, do the duplicate stitch in the stitch above. So instead of moving over to the left and up one, I'm going to move over to the right and up one. And then to the right and up one, to the right and up one, and so forth. I apologize. My dog is barking at the wind. Okay, so here I am, and again, I'm coming in from behind, from behind, from underneath. This is what it looks like on the inside, by the way. So I'm coming in from behind, and I'm going into the stitch. The, here's the stitch that I've colored in, and then here's the stitch next door to it. So I'm going to come in that stitch. behind careful not to split my yarns I am okay so and instead of going around from right to left because I'm traveling traveling left to right I'm gonna come in from the opposite side and I'm still following this stitch here but instead of going right to left I'm going left to right so I'll come in and then go behind both stitches uh, both legs rather of the stitch above pull my yarn and then go right back down where I came in. I haven't woven my ends in on the back. Before you do the embroidery on your Argyle project, you may want to weave in all, all your loose ends before you do the embroidery. It's not impossible to do the uh, duplicate stitch once you've um, with, with the, your loose ends, but as you can see, I've got all these tails down there and it gets a little um, crazy with all my tails in the way. Okay, so I am going to now work my way across to this stitch here, and I'm going to continue through the center of the stitch up to this stitch of, over here, and then I'm going to switch direction and go to this stitch and then I'm going to start working down. So I'll get up to this point and then I'll come back and we'll talk about working our way down. See you in a bit. Okay, so I have worked my way along here and now I'm at the top of the um, diamond up here. 
on here. So now I'm ready to work my way down. Okay, so here I am. And I want to go over one and down. So I want to uh, duplicate this stitch right here, over one and down. So again, I'm going to come in at the base of the stitch that I want to duplicate, which is this one here. Making sure not to catch my tails. Okay, and just as before, I'm going to go around uh, following the strand. So around and behind the two legs. And again, I'm now I'm, um, because I'm working right to left, I'm inserting right to left. Okay, whoops. And underneath and pull it down. Okay, and so I am um, going to go over one and down one. So now I'm going to continue working this way. Um, Embroidering down to this stitch, and then I'm going to go down to this stitch and pass it and continue on down to this stitch, and then turn around and go down to this stitch, past it, and back down to my um, end point here. So I will do that and I will come back and show you what it looks like when we're all done. See you in a bit. Okay, so I finished working my contrasting lines into the pattern and all that's left to do is weaving in the ends before I go back down and um, take my provisional cast off apart so that I can um, close the bottom with the three needle bind off and make a little bag for the um, so that's what this swatch is going to become um, and when you wait weave in your ends and after you've done all that it's a good idea to kind of stretch your fabric just a little bit to let everything settle in so that it all um, looks nice and pretty. So here we are with our argyle pattern knit in the round. And just for comparison, so here was our chart that um, we worked from and here's the actual knitting with um, our own choice of color. Okay, hope that made um, sense and hope you enjoyed this little mini class on how to knit um, intarsia and in particular an argyle pattern. If you have questions, feel free to um, post them in the comments or uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and my uh, knitting students group on Facebook and uh, I'll be happy to address or answer any questions that you might have. I'll see you next time.